Yeah, we're given the force at the switch as C as three Newton. And we want to find the unstressed length of the spring. Okay, so how do we do this problem? What you have is a brake paddle, and originally it's, it's not vertical. It's the, when there's a point D here, at, at this point there is a pin. This whole thing can rotate about this point. It can go this way or this way by applying a force somewhere here. So <coughs> the current position is that this force is zero. Force in the part here is three newton, and your actual parallel is vertical. So to bring this thing to vertical position, this spring has to stretch. Or <coughs> another of looking at this would be that if this was point D then the paddle was roughly like this. And the spring length, the original length would be from here up to here, that was L O. So that was the <coughs> original spring length. And then when force was applied, here, the, the spring is stressed, and let's say the stretching was an extra distance, x sub s. So your current length, L, which is 100, is really <coughs> the original length, the one we really want to find, plus the elongation in the spring as a result of force of 3 Newton at this point. So your L0 is going to be 100 minus whatever is the actual elongation in that particular spring. <coughs> now to find this, we know the equation. That means the force in the spring, which is Fs, that's going to be the stiffness of the spring and <coughs> the elongation in that given spring. So Xs is going to be 80, I'm sorry, Fs, the force in the spring, and <coughs> the K was the spring stiffness, or we could say Fs divided by 80. So if I need, <coughs> I mean if I work my way backward, it means if I need this length, or the original length of the spring, then I really need this force. That's the force in the spring and equilibrium position. So we draw another free power diagram. 